of prayer is open and God is in control. We are excited to invite you to River Chicago Online Worship Experience. I'm Pastor Robert. And I am Pastor Desiree Anderson. Rivers, the place of life and love, is here to serve you. Get your family members and share, share, share. Start those watch parties. Our senior leader, Apostle Stephen Gardner, will inspire us with the Wednesday series, The God of Salvation. Get ready for worship. Get ready for a visitation. Get ready for a divine encounter. It's time for church. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice. We will be glad in it. We give you glory.
tonight to talk to you about the God of our salvation. And I want to talk to you specifically tonight about God's plan salvation, not the plan of salvation, but God's plan salvation. I believe that it is vital in the hour that we live in that we understand that God has a plan for everything that is going on in the nation, in the world. Everything that is happening has not taken God by surprise. He is the God of salvation, and his plan has always been salvation. God in his divine counsel has always sought to save and to deliver and to set free. Open up your Bibles tonight to Psalms chapter 3. Psalms chapter 3. 
I'll be reading in the Amplified Version, and we're going to teach this tonight. Get your Bibles, get your electronic vices, devices, wherever you are. God's plan, salvation. In Psalms chapter 3, beginning at verse number 6 through 8 in the Amplified Version, it says, I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people who have set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for you have struck all my enemies on the cheek. You have broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongs to the Lord. May your blessings be upon your people, Selah. Pause and calmly think of that. David was in a situation here where he was greatly outnumbered, but he held on to his faith in God. He knew that it wasn't a natural situation that would deliver him. He understood that the deliverance, that the salvation would come from God. The Bible says in the book of Zechariah that then answered and spake unto me, saying, this is the word of the Lord Zerubbabel, saying, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. I want that to resonate on the inside of you, that in the hour that we're living in, it's not going to be by our might. It's not going to be by our power. I need you to understand out there that it's going to be by the salvation of Almighty God. God is the one who will deliver. Now, God can do it through vaccines. God can do it through uh, 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 politically. He can do it through all type of things, but we are not to put the whole of our trust in those things. Our trust is to be in God. God is reiterating. He's saying it's not going to be by the might of men. It's not going to be by the power of men, but it's going to be by my spirit, my salvation, my plan of saving, my plan of delivering, my plan of setting people free. It's going to come through God. It's going to be by his spirit. As we look at this story with David, we see that David was not afraid of the ten thousands of people that had set themselves against him round about. And I want to speak that to you today that it is not a necessity for you to be in fear, for you to be in trepidation or dread as a result of the things that are coming on the earth, even as David sets a precedence from these scriptures in Psalms 3, 6 through 8. And he says, I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people who have set themselves against me round about. He goes on to say, I will not be afraid he says, I will not be afraid of the tens of thousands. He says, for thou hast smitten all my enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Now, this is awesome right here because even in the midst of the battle, even in the midst of the war, David is illustrating his faith. His faith. He's speaking in the past tense. He's declaring victory right there in the midst of the war. We got to begin to declare victory, people of God, right here in the midst. We must understand that God is the God of salvation and his plan. His plan is to save. His plan is to deliver. His plan is to preserve. As we look throughout the annals of the Bible and we begin to see how things would come upon the earth, God's plan was salvation. He saved them in the time of Noah. He saved them in the time of Joseph. When there was famine, when there was flood, when there was a deluge that came across the land, God was always involved in salvation. He was always involved in the saving and the preservation of people. And so now he comes on the scene and he lets us know it's not going to be by the might of man. It's not going to be by the power of man. It's not going to come strictly through the vaccines. It's not going to come strictly through some type of medical science. It's not going to come strictly through the elections that are going to take place in November. See, we got a whole lot of faith and a whole lot of things. But here it was David declaring his faith in the midst of the battle, in the midst of the storm, right here in the midst of it. We got to declare faith. We got to be like David. We got to let them know, thou has smitten my enemies, glory to God, and upon their cheekbones and their breaking the teeth of the ungodly. These things that are going on all around us, these, these discrepancies, these riots, these looting, everything that is going on in the earth today, God is still in control. Hallelujah. The Bible declares in Psalms 3 and 8 that salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon the people, Selah. That word, Selah, pause and calmly think about that. Salvation is in the hands of God. Salvation belongs to the Lord. His blessing. His ability to bless. His ability to bring us out. His ability to preserve. It is in God. 
the, the good word, the God's word translation of the same scripture in Psalms 3 and 8 said, victory belongs to the Lord. Now, I love this because when you look at different translation, it brings out or it amplifies what's already being said. So in the King James version, he says salvation belongs unto the Lord. But in the God's word version, he begins to tell us that victory belongs to the Lord. So now that gives us an example of what salvation is. God's plan of salvation is a plan of victory, victorious living, that in the midst of all the trials, in the midst of the test, in the midst of contradictory circumstances, in the midst of everything that is going on around us, God has still given us victory because victory belongs to the Lord. And if victory belongs to God, and if we belong to God, then we have the victory. Glory to God. It says, may your blessing rest on your people, Selah. Come on, somebody right where you are, say, I'm blessed, hallelujah. You've been, you've, been, you've been saying, oh, man, this is depressing. You've been saying, oh, man, the things that are going on, the things that are heading to earth. But no, 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 no. Victory, salvation belongs to God, and you are blessed. In the Message Bible, it says, real help, hallelujah, glory to God. Real help comes from God. Your blessings clothe your people. Come on, put on some new clothes today. Take off the depression. Take off the oppression. Take off everything that's going on in the world today and begin to put on the clothes of blessedness. Begin to put on the clothes of knowing and acknowledging that God has your back. God favors you in this season and in this hour. He is the God of salvation, and his plan is to preserve. His plan is to keep. His plan is to make whole. His plan is for our welfare. He is the God of victory. He, it is, this is real God, real talk, real real time, real help, real aid, glory to God. Not something in the sweet by and by, not something that's coming down the pike, not something that's going to happen in November because you vote out number, number 45 or put somebody else in there. No, 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 no. Our trust and our confidence has to be in God in this season and in this hour. He is the one that controls the victory. He is the one who is the God of salvation. And his plan from the very beginning has always been salvation. His plan from the very beginning has always been to preserve and to keep his people. It didn't matter what messed up, what hiccups they had in the garden. God always had a plan, and his plan has constantly and all the time been salvation. Let's look at this word salvation. Let's break it down. The word salvation, and I love this, in the Hebrew, the word salvation is the word Yeshua. And many times I'll just take that translation and God, man, God becomes whatever we need. Hallelujah. I love that God says, and, 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 and when he found, uh, when Moses found God's at the burning bush, he says, I am that I am. God is saying, man, I can be whatever you need me to be whenever you need me to be it. Hallelujah. Whatever your circumstance, wherever you find yourself, I am Yeshua. I am salvation. I can be whatever is necessary. This word salvation means deliverance. This word means prosperity. This word means something that is saved. It means aid. It means victory. It means prosperity. See, we, we, we've gone through these times where we depended on the stimulus and we're looking to see if another stimulus is going to come. Don't put your trust in that. Put your trust in the God of salvation because God's plan is salvation. God's plan is your prosperity. God's plan is your welfare. God's plan is your victory. God's plan is your health your healing, and your wholeness. The word welfare sometimes get a bad rap, so I wanted to look up the word welfare because, you know, in some places, welfare, uh, you know, it's not the good welfare that we think about. Welfare is the state of doing well, especially in respect to good fortune, happiness, well-being, prosperity of a person, group, or organization. God wants the welfare of the world, hallelujah, because salvation has been offered to the world. Listen, this is the God of our salvation that we're dealing with today. His plan in Psalm 62 and 1 in the King James Version, it says, truly my soul waiteth upon who? It waits upon God because from him comes salvation. In Psalm 60 and 5, Psalm 60 and 5, it says that thy beloved may be delivered. Save with thy right hand. The right hand always speaks of the hand of power, the hand of authority. Save with thy right hand and hear me. And this is, this is what I like. Go to Psalms 37 and 39. Psalms 37 and 39. He says, but the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. Do you find yourself in a time of trouble today? 
Do you find that things that are going on in the earth realm are very troubling? But God's plan has always been salvation. When you think about God, you must understand nothing catches him off guard. Nothing has snuck up on God. God is, 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 is omniscient. Hallelujah. He's all-knowing. He already knew. He already knew what was going to go on in 2020. He already knew. He's omniscient like that. Listen, this word omniscient, it means having complete or ultimate knowledge, awareness, understanding, perceiving all things. Nothing catches God off. Nothing has snuck up on God. Nothing. It, was, it wasn't like God was in 2019, right at the time that we was about to cross over and folk was in their watch night services and everything, and he was somewhere, oh, man, I don't know what's going to happen in 2020. No, God already knew. God already knew in his omniscience. God already perceived all things. He already saw all things. He already knew and he already had a plan. His plan has always been salvation. Salvation was on his mind. Hallelujah. The scripture says in Isaiah 46 and 10, when we deal with God knowing all things, it says that he declares the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. I want you to note that. God said, my counsel shall stand. What is the counsel of God? The counsel of God is his salvation. He said, my salvation will stand. No matter what society looks like, no matter how much they loot, no matter how much they riot, no matter how much they pandemic, no matter how much they talk about this and talk about that, God is allowing us to understand that tonight, 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 I want you to realize that he is an omniscient God. He has foreknowledge. He already knew the end from the beginning. And he has already declared that my counsel shall be accomplished. What's your counsel, God? I'm glad you asked. My counsel is salvation. I'm going to make sure that there's a preservation. I'm going to make sure that there's victory. In the midst of all the hell that's going on in society, I'm going to make sure that there's a still a prosperity and there's still welfare. I'm going to take care of that that needs to be taken care of. Don't look on the things that are before you, but keep your eyes on God. God is the God of our salvation. I want to read this in another translation in Isaiah 46 and 10, where God begins to talk about how he declares the end from the beginning and how his counsel will stand. The Amplified breaks it down a little bit. It says, declaring the end and the result. Look here, God already know the results. Hallelujah. You ever, you ever take a test and you're waiting on the results? Well, God don't need to take a test. Hallelujah. God already knows the results. God already knows the outcome. He knows the end from the beginning. He says that from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. The things that are not yet done, you're seeing things play out in real time, but God has already seen things played out. Hallelujah. He has already developed a plan. He has already have an action plan. He's already knowing that he's going to get return on his investment. God already know he's omniscient like that. He has all the knowledge. See, God in his omniscient, he don't take in data and then spit something out. See, even with a computer, a computer can have a dual core. It can have two brains in it or whatever have you, and you have to still put put in information, and then that computer will output something. Well, God is omniscient. He don't need any input to have output. He already declares the end from the beginning. He already, in his foreknowledge, already knew what would happen, glory to God, already knew what would go down. And so he had already planned uh, for the inevitable, that that he knew that would happen, that that was imminent, that that was on the horizon, that that would come. He already knew, and so God already had a plan, and his plan is salvation. God's plan is is to preserve. God's plan is to keep. God's plan is to prosper. He wants a people that will trust in him like David, that right in the middle of the battle, David begins to declare to the enemy, your bone cheeks are going to be broken. Your mouth is going to be smashed because I'm coming out of this thing victorious. I'm coming out of this thing on top because I serve a God who is the God of my salvation and his plan has been victory from the beginning. His plan has been victory from the time that he laid the foundations of the earth because in his omniscience and in his foreknowledge, his counsel was already determined before to be done. Glory to God. He says here, uh, 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 my counsel shall stand. My salvation shall stand. My plan shall stand. And I will do all my pleasure and purpose. Glory to God. God says, man, everything that I purpose to do, it's going to get done. 
everything that I plan to do is going to get done. Now, you may be running around here like a chicken with your head cut off, and you may be looking at societal things and looking at stuff in the news and all type of reports that's coming out, and you may think, oh, my God, the end is coming. Oh, da, da, da. what's going on? No, God is saying it's all under control. Uh, all these things are going to be performed in my counsel. Now, 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 how far back does this go? He says he determines the end from the beginning. Now, uh, there's one beginning over in Genesis 1 and 1. Look at this. Go to Genesis 1 and 1. Let's, let's, see what, let's see how far back did God have a plan. Let's see. Let's see. He, I know he had a plan before 2020, and when the bottom fell out in 2008, I know he had a plan. And, and, and remember when they thought the lights was going to go out and uh, Y2K, 2000, zero, zero, party over. out of You remember that, right? And so, so all these times, God had a plan. God, God always was on top of things. Let, let's find out how far back does God go. He says in Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And so, so if we go back to the beginning when God formed the world and he, he formed the stars and, and then land and sea and he formed Adam and Eve, we would think that, man, that's, that's how far God went back to declare the end from the beginning. But there's a beginning before that beginning. Let's go to John 1 and 1. There's, a, there's another beginning. There's a beginning before that beginning. See, that was the beginning of earth and heaven, but there was a beginning that outdates that. And so in John 1 and 1, he says, in the beginning, was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And so there's a beginning that comes before the beginning of Genesis 1-1. Now, why is this important? Because see, God's plan of salvation already had been worked out and it had already been in the mind of God before God ever laid the foundations of the earth. And so, so when, we, when we deal with the mind of omniscience and we deal with the mind of foreknowledge, we must then begin to understand that God had a a plan that was way before. It wasn't a 10-year plan. He didn't plan to do something for 2020 back 10, 10 years ago in 2010. No, 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 baby. He already had a plan that dated all the way back before, before even he laid the foundations of the world. Go to Revelations 13 and 8. Revelations 13 and 8. I want you to see this. We're talking about how far back does this plan of salvation go? How, much, how far back was God planning to save? How far back was God planning to deliver and to bring his people out with a strong hand? Well, in Revelations 13 and 8, Revelations 13 and 8, the God that we serve declaring the end from the beginning, he says, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, wait, wait the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. See, that's why it becomes important that we date this and we find out that he wasn't slain from the foundation of Genesis 1-1, but there had to be a council that was held in the heavens, glory to God. And the Godhead had to come together. And there was some talk in the beginning when there was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And in this council, they had already determined that we got to come up with a plan. We got to have a plan that's going to preserve folk, that's going to keep folk, that's going to bring folk out regardless of the situation. They already knew that swine flu. They already knew that Spanish flu. They already knew that COVID. They already knew that hoof and mouth disease. They already knew. They already knew cancer. Already, They already knew. So they wanted to come up with a plan so we couldn't go with in the beginning where he created the heavens and the earth. We had to go way, way back. We had to go way, 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 way back. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. Before they ever laid foundation God had already determined, I'm going to send my only begotten son, and he's going to procure this great salvation. He's going to be the one that's going to cause preservation. He's going to be the one that's going to cause welfare in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the battle, just like David could declare in the midst of the trial and the test when tens of thousands was against him. My God is still the God of salvation. And so it is today. Stop looking for the polls. Stop looking for the voting rights. Stop looking for the political political industry. It's time to looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. It's time to look unto God. God, the God of salvation, has always had a plan. He has always had a plan and a purpose and a counsel that he had determined from the beginning. Woo, glory to God. That it would be fulfilled, that it would be done. Come on, let's keep moving here. Go to Romans 8 and 29. Let me, let me prove this out a little bit more. So God in his omniscience, he then went back past Genesis 1-1, hallelujah, 
and he, he, he then went into eternity past. And, and, and in eternity's past, he's saying that before I ever said, let there be light, before I ever said there's an Adam and an Eve, before I ever took a rib from the side, I had already planned that Jesus would be slain. I'd already, I'd, in, in the mind of God, my son was already dead. Woo, glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. He says in Romans 8 and 29, for whom he did foreknow. That, talk, that speaks of the foreknowledge of God. That speaks of God knowing the end from the beginning. That speaks of the omniscience of God, God knowing everything. He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, the son that would be slain before he laid the foundations. So in the mind of God, it was already taken care of. That no matter what circumstance, no matter what situation comes upon the earth, I'm going to bring a plan that will be the remedy to everything you face. Everything you deal with, everything you come up against, I got a plan. It is the plan salvation. It is me sending my son into the earth. And see, it didn't even matter when he actually came because in the mind of God, it was already done before he laid the foundation. And I'm going to show you that in a minute with Adam and Eve. And so God says here, he says that in his foreknowledge, he had already predestined that we conform to an image, an image to look like Jesus, an image to be like Jesus. Jesus walked the earth and he had peace that passes all understanding. Jesus walked the earth and he walked in the abundance of life. Jesus walked the earth and he was not sick. He was not depressed. He was not downtrodden. Come on, y'all. Y'all don't understand. Jesus had looting and rioting when he was walking the earth. They tried to throw Jesus off a cliff. They had bad times when Jesus was on the earth. It's not like bad times just came upon the earth. There was leprosy in the time of Jesus. It ain't like Jesus didn't contend with nothing. He didn't deal with nothing. But Jesus was walking in God's plan, his plan salvation. He knew his purpose and he knew why he was here. He knew who to trust in. Jesus wasn't around here talking about we got to vote in Caesar or we got to get rid of Caesar. It didn't matter who Caesar was. He was the God of salvation. He was the one that was going to bring preservation. He was the one that was going to cause welfare to hit the earth and to take care of people. Whoa, Jesus. I want you to understand this thing, salvation, man. So, uh, get this in your spirit, down in your shundo. Salvation is welfare. Salvation is prosperity. Salvation is deliverance from the molestation of demons. There's some devils out here trying to molest you. They're trying to take advantage of you. But God has given you salvation to arise above the tactics of the enemy. Glory to God. This salvation, hallelujah, is prosperity. You ain't got to wait on the government for nothing. God said he shall supply. God said he would cause all grace to abound towards you that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound unto every good work. I hear these people out here, yeah, the church just want to pray. Yeah, because men ought to always pray and not to faint. Glory to God. Because there's power in the fervent, effectual prayers of the righteous. Now, you can downplay prayer if you want to. But God said, if my people, which are called by my name, if they would humble themselves and pray and seek his face and turn from their wicked way, then he would exhibit salvation. He would exhibit preservation in the land. He would exhibit welfare in the land. He would exhibit prosperity in the land. Because he is the God of salvation and from the beginning. No, not the beginning of Genesis 1 and 1, but from the beginning of John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. In the beginning when the Godhead had counsel at the round table in the heavenly holy holies, hallelujah, when the Godhead came together and they said, what's the plan for the earth? What are we going to do? Because we already know in our omniscience and our foreknowledge, we already know they're going to mess up. We already know they're going to do some jacked up stuff. They may come up with some stuff that come on the earth and cause people to die by the groves, but we got to have a plan. And Jesus and the Holy Ghost and the Father, they sat around and they developed a plan. They said, we're going to call this plan salvation. And God the Father looked over at him and he said, look here word, I'm going to transform you into the, the, the word incarnate. I'm going to put you in flesh and I'm going to have you come through the matrix of a woman and I'm going to cause you to hit the earth and you're going to come in and you're going to give your body a ransom. And the word sat there and they said, hey, lo, prepare me a body. I'll go in the world in, in and the purpose and then the pleasure of God to do the counsel of Almighty God. Hallelujah. God had a plan. His plan was salvation. In Revelations 13 and 8, God said he was slain from the foundation. Woo, 
Ooh, that's heavy, man. That's heavy. It was slain from the foundation. That, that means that God already knew that we would reject him. That means that God already knew what they would do to his son. That means that in spite of all that, and he already knew that he said, I'm still going to allow Jesus to go. Ah, oh, glory. What kind of love is this? What, 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 I, this, this type of, this type of love passes understanding. That God knew what they was going to do to his son. God knew that they would reject Jesus. He knew from the foundation, but his plan, his plan was salvation. His plan was for the preservation of his people. His plan was for the saving of his people. Hallelujah. It was all determined from the beginning, all before the foundations were ever laid over in Genesis 3 and 15. Now, this is why this becomes so important that God knew before the foundation, because as soon as man got on the earth, man jacked it up. <laughs> and so God had already had to initiate his plan. And in Genesis 3.15... Whereas knowing that in the divine annals of the Godhead and in eternity, God wanted his counsel of salvation to stand. He says in Genesis 3 and 15, I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Not only was God working out his counsel, not only was God working out his purpose, not only was God working out his pleasure, but God made it hard on himself. He then now gave a woman a seed. Pause and calmly think about that. Hallelujah. Women, I hope you know, I know, I know, I know, I hope you know that um, the anatomy of a woman, woman don't carry seed, woman carry eggs, man carry seed. So when God speaks this, this is a clouded version of the virgin birth. Hallelujah. God said, I'm going to make this thing hard on myself. <laughs> He, said, he says, the woman is going to, to, to formulate my counsel, to perform my purposes in the earth realm. I'm going to cause the woman to have seed. Glory to God. The man is the one with the zera. He's the one with the sperm. He's the one with the seed. And the seed goes and it takes care of the egg. And then the woman gets pregnant. But in this situation, hallelujah, I like to look at this, some stuff we learned in seminary. The Old Testament is, is concealed in, 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 the, in, in the, um, the, no, the New Testament is concealed in the Old. We, you, can't, you can't see it clearly. It's types and it's shadows, glory to God. But God was showing us a picture of what he was going to do through a virgin birth that a woman would be with seed. And he let them know, listen, 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 listen. He says, not only is the woman going to be with seed, but it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Go to Isaiah 53 and 10, 53 and 10. See, because even when the plan of salvation is being enacted, even when God's plan, salvation is being done on the earth, there are people running around like, like, like what is going on? What is happening? Just like they running around in 2020. But it says in Isaiah 53 and 10, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. I'm going to read that again. Hallelujah. I want that to impact you right there while you're looking at your electronic device. It pleased the Father to bruise Jesus. He has put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed. And he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his head. In the Amplified Version, it said, and yet it was the will of the Lord to bruise Jesus. He put him to grief, and he made Jesus sick. When you and he make his life an offering for sin, and he has risen from the dead in time to come, he shall see his spiritual offspring. He shall look at Jesus and prolong his days and will have, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. God is getting pleasure out of crushing his son. God is getting pleasure out of putting sickness on his son because it's his counsel being performed. His plan, salvation, is being enacted in the earth realm. In the Message Bible, it says, still, it's what God had in mind all along. 
God's plan was to crush Jesus with pain. God's plan was to give himself as an offering for sin, that he'd see life come from it, life and that more life. And God's plan will deeply prosper with him. The Bible says, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. God's plan was to kill his son. Woo, Jesus. God's plan was to crush his son. God's plan of salvation. There had to be a crushing. There had to be a making of sick so that you could have the cure. Hallelujah. There had to be a crushing so that you could walk away unscathed, so that you could be preserved. Salvation is the preservation. Salvation is the welfare. And while this was all going on, let's go, let's fast forward to the day of Calvary. Let's fast forward to the passion of the cross. They, they took Jesus and they hung him. And they, what they say, they hung him high and they stretched him wide. And everybody was going, the, the disciples, they ran out there. What's going? on kind of sound like 2020 to me. What's going on? Everything seems out of sorts. Everything seemed chaotic. Everything seemed like what, 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 this state got a problem, that state got a problem. Stuff going on all over the place. And then in Acts, it comes to bear and it gives you a, 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 a sight to see. It says, who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, why is the heathen raging? Why are the people imagining the vain thing? The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers are gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ for of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, Herod and Pontius Pilate and the Gentile and the people of Israel. We could say it like this in 2020. They going crazy all over the United States of America. They burning stuff up. They looting. They doing all type of stuff. But in verse number 28, it says, for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determine before to be done. God always had a plan. And his plan has been salvation. That while everything was going on with Jesus on the cross, while Jesus was sitting there, <sighs> Eloi, Eloi, <sighs> Lama Sabbatini. When everybody was thinking, oh, man, this is it. It's going to be over. I thought he was the Messiah. I thought he was the one to come. He hasn't been crushed. He hasn't been bruised. They done stabbed him in the side. He up on the cross. Oh, my God, it's chaotic. Everything is going on. But it was always God's plan. And God is sitting there. He's looking. He said, it was always my plan. He said, I had already determined before by my hand and by my counsel that I would perform my good pleasure in the earth, that I would be the God. Of salvation and that my planned salvation would work to deliver from the molestation of demons. My plan of salvation would give welfare. My plan of salvation would give prosperity. My plan, salvation, hallelujah, would give you an answer in the midst of all these questionable circumstances. Come on and stand on your feet. I want to pray for you before we go. I want you to experience the salvation of God. Yeah, yeah, I understand you saved. I understand you saved, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about God's ability to preserve you. I'm talking about God's ability to keep you. I'm talking about God's ability to bring you welfare in the times that we're living in. Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, we lose salvation across the airwaves. We lose your ability to preserve. You lose your ability to keep, Lord God. We lose your ability, Lord God, in your plan that you had already founded from the foundations of the earth. We lose it upon the people of God. That one that's depressed. That one that's downtrodden, Lord God. That one that feels like everything is falling apart. I thank you that you have already predetermined that in your foreknowledge and in your omniscience before you you had already determined what was going to be done, and you already had a plan. You already had a plan to deliver. You already had a plan to bring us out. I thank you, Lord God, for the deliverance from the molestation of demonic trafficking. That, Lord God, these demons that would try to traffic in the psyche, that would try to traffic in the emotional realm, I thank you, Lord God, that you bring them to nothing. That even, Lord God, as David stood up and he declared victory in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the battle, we declare that we are victorious because Yeshua, our salvation, has been victorious and he came to give us the victory to cause us to come out on top we thank you tonight Lord God for being the God of salvation we thank you tonight Lord God for your plan salvation we give you praise we give you honor and we give you glory in Jesus name amen and amen. Again, we want to thank you for joining our online worship experience. On behalf of Apostle Stephen Gardner and Prophetess Yolanda Gardner, we bless you 
and we thank God for you. We'll be back real soon. Have a phenomenal evening in Jesus' name. River Chicago would like to thank our members, partners, and friends who sow into the work of building the house of prayer. We trust that this is good soil and pray that fruit is abounding to your account. We need you to stay tuned as we are about to give electronically. You can do this via Zelle, Cash App, Text to Give, and you can also send your checks to our P.O. Box. All of our platforms are on the screen. I'd like at this time if you would hold your seat before the Lord and help me confess corporately. You ready? Let's go. Father, we declare that you alone are the source for River Chicago and our partners around the globe. We decree you provide all we need above and beyond. We confess the consistent flow of finances. They come into these houses and we decree that you multiply every seed that's sown into rivers. We decree you are the God of supply in every need that's present and before us. You are supplying through the power of seed sown into this ministry. Lord, we confess that you are causing all grace to abound towards us, and abundance is our portion. We prophesy large amounts of finances are deposited into Rivers Accounts weekly, and we decree that every financial endeavor of God's people are met above and beyond. We decree phenomenal returns come to us as we adhere to the biblical principles of giving and sowing into the work of the kingdom. We decree the financial seeds we've sown to the nations, to the disenfranchised, to the poor, to the needy. They come to us again multiplied. We decree that we are satisfied with favor and we are full of the blessing of the Lord. We decree excellence and stewardship over our membership friends, and partners around the globe, and we decree increase on all finances that come unto us. We declare Rivers is a place of perpetual, supernatural harvest in the mighty name of Jesus. Hey, we want to thank you for being a part of our online worship experience. Have a phenomenal week, and we'll be back with you real soon. Kingdom blessings.